Hi, it's Dave. So it's been a crazy, crazy one week.、Um, about a week ago, I was scrambling, looking at the situation in Afghanistan and seeing if I can do anything. And the feeling was like I just couldn't sit back and do nothing because I knew there was going to be a huge amount of generational impact happening just in a matter of days. And where people end up in terms of geography after the US leaves is going to make a huge impact to many, many perhaps generations of people. So I wanted to see if I could help. I tweeted out, Kind of an offer, and I said, Hey, I wanted to help people. And、um, one of my YouTube actually、uh, followers DM'd me and says, Hey, I know some people, you know,、um, and he was from Afghanistan. And so we got a clubhouse going. It was like almost that same day. And in that clubhouse, I met Fatima and Rabia. They were、um, students in Canada who had their families back in Kabul and they didn't know what to do. And check out that interview actually in my、um, channel. I'll link to it in the video description. That was last week. We started to build a network immediately, and it was kind of like an underground railroad of sorts. Because first, I was trying to find are any borders open? Like, how are people crossing the borders?、Um, and what we needed to do, right? And what are the different kind of alternative routes? And for most of the families we were helping, actually, the airport and through governments wasn't going to either work or wouldn't be timely. And then there's also other questions of logistics how much money do we need? What kind of people do we need on the ground? How do we get the resources to the right place? In the end, Just actually,、um, uh, was it yesterday morning or the day before? My brain has brain fog this whole week. I've been get, barely getting any sleep. But we were finally successful in getting out all the five families that we're helping Rabia's family, Fatima's family, and three others. And they all are friends actually up in Canada. And the total people was 38 people in total. That was directly coordinated by me and these five families. And then there were actually more than 100 others that are partner. Where it was coordinating separately, and that we helped finance、um, through my network on my YouTube channel and on Twitter. So, in this video, I want to reveal it all and I want to share actually, open it up, how we did what we did. And I want to share as much as I can. I thought the cool, kind of an interesting way of doing it was to bring on one of the ladies that we helped. And I'm going to bring on Samaya Ahmadi, and she is a college student up in Vancouver, Canada, studying at LaSalle College.、Um, let me bring her up right now. Hi, Samaya, how are you doing? Hi, Dave. I'm good. How are you? Good, good. It's been a crazy week, huh? I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you, have you gotten any sleep? Have you gotten some sleep actually after your family's gotten out? Yeah, maybe like for the last two nights.、Okay. I got like some sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been.、Um, yeah, I got a little bit more sleep last night actually、um, after you、yeah? guys were out. Yeah, but more、yeah. people are contacting <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah.、Um, so, Samaya,、um, you're in Canada right now um, studying um, fashion design, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And is it your, you said you had a few more semesters to go or so? Yeah, I have like a few more semesters to go.、Um, I actually took a semester off because、um, because of all the things that's going on. I couldn't focus on my school.、Um, yeah, so I'm like just like working right now. And、um, yeah, maybe hopefully I can like start again like next semester. Got it.、Um, so I'm wondering if you could just tell us a brief kind of, Background of where you grew up and how you got to Canada, and then maybe we can go into your family who was still in、uh, Afghanistan up until just a couple of days ago. But yeah, where did you grow up in Afghanistan and how did you you know end up in Canada?、Um, okay, I grew up in Kabul.、Um, well, like, I was r e a l l I mean, like, I studied like、uh, two classes, like, our first classes in Iran. Then we, like, after Taliban left, like,、um, Kabul, then, like, we came back to Afghanistan.、Um, I was in Afghanistan for, like,、um, till grade, like, 11.、Um, so, yeah, like, I studied in Marif- Marifat High School, actually. Like, a lot of my friends,、uh, they're like, they were,、uh, we were, like, classmates. And like after that, I got like a full scholarship in、uh, one of the boarding schools in Wisconsin, United States. So I moved to the United, United States when I was like、uh, 17. And I did my high school there.、Um, it was like a pretty good experience.、Um, and after that, I, I decided to move to Canada.、Um, and yeah, so I applied for asylum and I got my PR. Uh, so I have like.、Um, I've been in Canada for like five years in BC. Got it.、Um, so, for those who don't know, PR is permanent residence、um, yeah, in Canada.、Um, boarding school, were you, did you do your 
your junior and senior years or just one year in, in the boarding school in the US? Yeah, it was like just my senior year. Okay. Uh, yeah. Got it. That's like, um, that's amazing. Um, was it difficult to get that scholarship? Uh, it was definitely difficult. Uh, I remember like applying for like several schools and like I got into like few of them because like I really wanted to go like to the United States or like out of Afghanistan and like explore more. Uh, and um, yeah, so like, I got into few schools, but like most of them didn't offer me for full scholarship and like I couldn't like pay myself or like my family couldn't afford it. So like I kind of like was um, this like I already gave up, but because like uh, all of them didn't give me a like full scholarship, then like I was like, oh, I'm not going to give up. Then like I like still like looked for more school. Then finally, Nord, um, my, my school, they like offered me full scholarship. And yeah, it was difficult, but. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's um, crazy. Um, for people who don't know Afghanistan um, and the, how different it is, like how much like per month was your family like living off of? Like, because if people, like people might not have an idea of like, oh, maybe she, like you're saying you can't afford to pay boarding school in the U.S., but how big of a gap is that, you know, like in terms of what your family is like, you know, yeah. uh, living on there? It's like a lot different. So like... I don't know how much is it right now. So like one um, U.S. dollar would be like around fifty, 50? or sixty. Okay. Or it might be even higher right now because uh, yeah, all the things that are going out. Um, but um, yeah, it's a lot different actually. Uh, so like our monthly um, income would be around like maybe thirty thousand Afghanis. Okay. Or like last than that. It depends okay. on the month. Yeah. All right. And thirty thousand Afghani. Let's see how much that is. So three hundred and fifty dollars. About. Got yeah, it. It's not yeah. like got nothing. It. In yeah. So they can't. They can't send you any money from <laughs> Afghanistan to help you. Exactly. So like got getting it. a full uh, like affording a school in the United yeah. States like, is crazy. Like yeah. you can't do it. So like I, I was like. Uh, hoping to get like full scholarship and my school like offered me full scholarship i was like yay i'm going to us." <laughs> <laughs> um after um okay so let's 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 fast forward a bit because i mean I, um you have your family still in um kabul this whole time who's yeah. in your family like um yeah if you can share um it's my uh, younger two sisters. Uh, one is 17, uh, Rahman is 17, and my youngest sister, is, her name is uh, Mahdia, and she's like around 16, uh, and my mom. Okay, got it. And so while you left to US and to Canada, like, have you been in touch with your family a lot? Like, what's been the communication? Yeah, I've been like talking to them all the time because like I miss them like so much. Um, yeah, like I uh, usually call them like once in a day for sure. Um, yeah. Got it. And then how how do you communicate? Is it WhatsApp usually or? Um, yeah, it's usually WhatsApp, okay. um, Messenger. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And then your two younger sisters. Um, I'm curious, like. What are they like? Are they just what? What do they like to do? Are they just um, normal teenage girls? Or yeah. Oh my god, they're actually so talented. Um, my um, Rahmana, the seventeen years old, um, she's like actually uh, she used to sing a lot. Um, she used to play guitar and like um, uh, she likes painting. She's like so talented, and um, it's really sad that like there is not much um, opportunities for like young generation, especially right now, to grow. Um, yeah, Mahdi is really talented too. They, uh, they both know how to, how to speak English. Um, um, they have like, actually Rahmana, my younger sister, she wants to like be a fashion designer too. Um, so yeah, uh, we both wanna like have our brand in the future hopefully uh, awesome. but um, yeah um, 
when you heard the Taliban took over Kabul um, a little over a week ago, what was your reaction or feeling? Mm. I I don't know. Since like I came to U.S. or like I moved out of house, even though like I was so young, like I always wanted um, my family to be, be with me or like get them out of Afghanistan for some reasons, you know, like even like when I was young, I knew that like, um, I don't know, like Taliban's going to come back and like, I, it, it's not that like I didn't have hope, but it's still, I was like really um, uptight about this idea of like Taliban coming back to Afghanistan and taking over. And when it finally happened, it, none of us could believe it. Like none of us. My mom used to. My mom was like um, in Kabul when like Taliban like took over Afghanistan like the first time, and like she used to tell tell us the stories like how Taliban used to retreat women or like treat everyone else, and uh, how like hard was it was for them to live and like you know actually live, and. Um, we were like so terrified, you know, like we were thinking Taliban is just like really big monsters that, you know, like gonna keep us like in a box and like we're not gonna be able to move. But when it actually happened, it was like terrifying. And I was like, like really scared because like, um, I have always like tried my mom and to get um, my mom and my sister out of Afghanistan, and when it finally like a Taliban came, um, I just like felt like really hopeless. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, like they're here, and I like I can't do much. I was blaming me. Um, I was like basically blaming everything. That that too like few days. I just like I felt like. I'm not alive, but like I would go to like work, you know, like I'm just like thinking about everything back home and like what's going on there. Like uh, I was just too scared for my family. Are they going to be alive or are they going to not be alive? What's going to happen to me? And yeah, so like I couldn't focus on my school. Uh, I couldn't literally focus my on my like jobs. Uh, I did like miss like a lot of days at work because uh, like it was crazy like um, thinking about it it just like give me like so much stress and like and sometimes I was just like it was hard for me to breathe at work when I like remember like oh like what's happening in Afghanistan right now it's just like I'm like here like helping customers but m mentally I'm there and like I, I feel like really heartbroken and like stressed so yeah I did took like a few days off and um, I took the semester off because like I couldn't handle it. Um, but yeah. And then how <laughs> did you, and then, yeah, how did you find me then? How did I find you? Um, okay, Fatima. I Fatima gave me uh, your Twitter. I never used Twitter before that. I, I always heard of Twitter. I have like other social media platforms, but not Twitter. But so like I downloaded it. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna like, um, there are like a lot of people. I kind of like gave up. I was like, oh my, oh my gosh, there's like no one who can help us, you know, like no one like cares about us. And like, um, so yeah, like when Fatima gave me, um uh your name and like i looked it up in twitter and like i texted you and i told you that like um fatima gave me your twitter and like you added me on whatsapp and like we started talking from there yeah what day was that um do you remember was uh, each day feels like a month this past week it was early in the week maybe monday or yeah yeah maybe it it around, was. or I something think right like, yeah, it yeah. wasn't like it was like yeah. a week ago. Yeah, less than must yeah, less than a week ago. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, so you heard from Fatima. Fatima and Rabia were in my first interview. Um, and they're friends of yours. Um, up in yeah. Vancouver. So you guys hang out. Um, and I I've talked mm -hmm. with all of you guys together in the same apartment. But um, yeah, when you contacted <laughs> me, um, um, we did a Skype interview. Um, uh, really fast. I'm like, get on, you know, Skype. I wanted, you know hear about your situation and because of 
you're being friends with Fatima and Rabia, we can include you kind of in the same communication and you can learn from what they're doing. Um, and so I'll pause this video right now for a sec. I want to show uh, a clip from that interview I did. I think it was back on Monday or so early in the week where we had first communication, like things were desperate. We had to move fast or you know, we wouldn't have time. Um, so here's the clip. Honestly, like this past few days, I've been like communicating, communicating with them like uh, throughout the day. Okay. Uh, well, like right now it's like nighttime. They're like okay. a couple, but like they're sleeping. But like okay. I make sure to like call them right. and text them. All right, they're the 16, 16 and 17, you said? All right, so fast forward, um, we do the Skype interview and I'm like, we got to rush, right? The border is still open into Pakistan by, um, uh, by, by, by land down south. And um, um, what did you do next? What was your kind of your next steps? Uh, so yeah, uh, our original plan was um, to get like their Iran visa, uh, so they can like move to Iran and like uh, go to Malaysia from there, which is like super expensive. But uh, I was like out of options, so I was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. I don't mind like just working here and like not studying. I just want you to, want you guys to be safe. So yeah, the original plan was that, but it didn't work because. Um, it just post got postponed because of COVID, because of Taliban, and like um, at the end, it just got canceled. So I was just like so hopeless. I'm like, there's nothing else to do, and like there's no way, and like other way for them to get out of Afghanistan, uh, except uh, you know like going to Pakistan. And um, yeah, then like um, I wanted to, I wanted them after you told me, yeah, like the border is gonna close and like it's gonna get like harder every day i was like i'm just gonna get them out of there like as soon as possible i told them to pack all their stuff one day um i was just like so consistent i didn't sleep i just like calling them oh pack this pack that like or like do everything and like don't worry about anything else just like pack um all the things that you need for now and uh, so yeah, they, in the morning they went to company and like they um, from there they went to Kandahar. Um, so yeah, it was like quite journey. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> um, was were your sisters scared at all, or were they just ready just to go? And yeah, you know, what was? Do you know anything Honestly, about their feelings? They were like they um they been like I feel like they were like ready. They just were so scary to stay in Afghanistan. They're just like, I remember my younger sister telling me that like, um, so like uh, this after COVID like died down a bit, the school started again. And like I told my sister to go back to school and like there was like uh, rumors that like, not rumors, Taliban was taking like over the provinces, you know, not Kabul, but like other provinces. And like, I remember my sister, you know, kind of giving up. She was like, I don't want to go to school. I feel like there's no like future. Even if I go to school, like nothing's gonna happen. And like, and um, I just like felt so sad. Cause like, you know, like, and there's nothing else for them to do. You know, like they're staying at home and like, they're super scared. Um, both of my sisters and my mom, um, they're like, yeah, they just wanted to get out of there, like no matter what, or they, they wanted to go, like it doesn't matter, they just wanted to get out of there. So yeah, like when I told them, they were just like, I told them before like they, like even going to like Kandahar, I told them it's gonna be super hard. Um, I wish I was there to help you guys like emotionally, but like I'm not there, but like I'm gonna be calling you guys, like you know, all the time. Uh, they're like super young, so uh, I was like, um, so yeah, I'll be calling you guys. Uh, stay strong. You guys can do this. So yeah, they did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it so uh, yeah, so yeah, we it, it was it's a brutal, brutal, brutal journey. I mean, we're talking like fifteen hours right, just to get to the border. About um, and so in process so this past week. I mean, this is just stuff we're unpacking right now. But so we had uh, Fatima's family. They. We're getting down 19 people or so, and then Rabia's family of three. So we had 22 people already ahead of you guys, right? And yeah. so they're your friends. You're in touch with them. I'm coordinating everything with them. Um, and um, how much did that help you to to see kind of some people ahead of you, your family? And then you had Fatima and Rabia yeah. next to you? 
Yeah, it helped me a lot. I felt like so like the before like I contacted got contacted with you and like with Fatima. Like before that, uh, I remember the past like the week before that, I was just like so like in in my box and like I was just like so like like I was just blaming myself you know like oh you could have done this you could have done this you could have like got them out of there sooner it's all your fault um so yeah but like I didn't talk to any friends you know like I didn't go out to hang out with anyone to just like you know um yeah I was just blaming myself and I was just like in my room all the time and like um yeah, just, you know, crying. But when, like, Fatima and Robin, like, I saw them, the process, and, like, helping them, helping each other, it's just, like, I was, like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm actually not alone. Like, before, like, the last week, I just felt like it was only me. It's not only me. There's, like, a lot of kids in Afghanistan. There's a lot of family back there, and they all need help. And I, I should be strong. I should stay strong, and I should, like, do what I can for them and find for my family. So yeah, it did give me like a lot of strength and hope. Uh, talking to my friends, talking to you. So yeah. Uh, Got it. Um, so for those wondering, like, you know, what are we? How are we doing this, right? So basically, the yeah. the process was, you know. Um, I tweeted out. We did Clubhouse. I got connected to Fatima Rabi. I did an interview with them. And then from that interview uh, on my channel with Fatima and Rabia, um, somebody reached out and um, we're able to establish some help in, in, in Pakistan, who, um, someone who was able to um, help us find some um, agents who help people cross the border. Um, and some do, don't do much, but um, they at least take them to the border, give some help, some tips and stuff, and meet them on the other side to take them. Um, and they provide other things, but um, without kind of that piece of the puzzle, it was really it was going to be really really hard. And so actually, um, this YouTube channel really like paved the way for us to establish um, contacts in Pakistan to get kind of the border crossing uh, avenue through, and then to get information too. So one of the difficult parts was is the border open? Who's crossing it? How do you get there? What do you need to cross? All this stuff. And so for that. Actually, YouTube was great, but also Twitter was great. So using my Twitter network, I was able to contact a bunch of people. People contacted me, and I was able to confirm through four different sources that the border there was open. People had just crossed. And what was crazy is th there was so much noise. A lot of people were saying, it's too dangerous. People aren't crossing. It's like, And when I was pressing them for more information, they just didn't have it. It was just rumors, right? And so there's so many rumors that it was closed. But when I pressed information for, for, from the right people, and through contacts, then the right information came out. And Twitter and uh, YouTube uh, was was crucial. So um, yeah, everyone who's watching and just you guys are part of, I think, something bigger, um, much bigger to, to help people even beyond um, what we're doing here. So um, we have the, our contacts established in Pakistan. We have kind of, you know, the, the agent contacts um, to help people, you know, cross in some way. Ra uh, Fatima and Rabia's family are right at the border. Um, and the, the first day we try, this is probably like Monday night, um, um, but yeah, I forget, Monday or early in the week in Kabul time. Um, three of Rabia's family and one of Fatima's family crossed. 18 were rejected. Um, do you remember that actually? We're, you were part of like, right? Yeah. So yeah. Did, were you scared that your family was going to get rejected also? I was definitely really scared because uh, it's a, a lot harder for my mom, like alone with my sisters. Um, so yeah, and they're like they're really young. They never cross the borders to anywhere. So yeah, I was definitely scared, uh, but I was hopeful. Um, I was just like wanted them to get out of there like as soon as possible. So like I wanted them to try anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was. I was. Um. Yeah. Your family it was was a tough one or challenging one because other families they had like men part of their group, but your family had only your mom and two teenage girls making a 15 hour drive, you know, through Afghanistan, like, you know, to the, to the border. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it was a tough one. So, um, uh, we get to the border and then, um, it was, um, I think Rabia's or Fatima's family crossed the next day, um, the 18. 
And then I think the next day your yeah. family came down w- together with Shagofa, or they met up together, right? Um, yeah. How do you how do you know Shagofa? Uh, Shigofa is like uh, one of my best friends too. Um, we went to the same high uh, like school back home in Afghanistan, but like she wasn't my classmate. Obviously, she is like younger than me. Okay. But yeah, she's like she's amazing. Like all of these girls that I know, they're like super amazing. They're just like they have like big hearts and like yeah, so, <laughs> I love them. So your family three and then Shigofa's family of seven, um, they came separately, but you guys are at the same place or nearby generally um, near the border. And so you guys, families are trying to basically cross the border. This is about three days ago or so. Um, um, So what happens then? Like, are you in touch with your your sisters? And are there problems like meeting up? And like, what are the first, you know, the final hours before they they try to cross? So like, um, they were like, okay, so they were planning to have the same agent helping them cross the border. So that was the plan. But like things changed changed really quickly. And like uh, my family had like their agents and the Shugufa's family there had their agents. So like, my, uh, but they they both went to Boldak together. Uh, once they got to Boldak, I think my uh, family, they uh, crossed the border, tried the first time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so like they, um, I think they passed the sec- second gate and they talk because like the i think the from what rahmana told me she told me that like from like uh, once they passed the second gate um the, one of the police officers you know, pointed pointed them at like uh, a way and like they just like you know straight went to that way and uh, they thought like they crossed the border they thought like it was that easy you know like just like they were happy. Rahman told me, "Oh my gosh, we're like so happy. We're like, oh my gosh, we crossed the border. It was not. It wasn't that difficult." Then, um, so yeah, once they like, uh, just like went straight, they saw like the cars. Um, they were all saying, "Oh, going to Boldag, going to Boldag." You know, they were like, "What do you mean going to Boldag?" You know. <laughs> so they thought they were in Pakistan. But they were not, they're like back to Afghanistan. So they were like, oh my gosh, we're back in Afghanistan. You know, like we, we couldn't cross the border. So like, they're like so sad. And um, did they call I you? Remember, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they called me. I remember telling them like, because like before, even before that, like I told them to like, there's like this uh, broadcast that uh, you gotta like wear to like be like uh, Pashtuns. Uh, so like workers like they, it covers your face completely i can show you the picture actually later maybe uh, my sister sent me the picture i can send it to you um so like they took like few pictures they sent it to me and i was like oh my gosh you guys gotta wear the burkas just like you know like try it again so yeah they tried again they um luckily passed the border this time so like my younger sister actually like they're super sharp and smart so like they saw the opportunities and like just like acted really well, and so yeah, they passed the border. They um they crossed the border. Then like once they got there, they called me and I was just like so shocked and happy. Like I've never been that happy in my life. I'm like oh my gosh, I'm just so relieved. Like uh, thank God, you know. Like um I was just thinking every like thinking about everything and thanking everyone. Uh, I was just yeah. It was like a really happy moment. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, that's the short version too. I mean, there's more. That's the short. Yeah, yeah. Version, there's yeah. like they had extra help well, too. Well, crossing yeah. the border is yeah. like, so difficult. Yeah. It's like especially for like uh, just young ladies yeah. without any men, uh, and um, you know, it's just so hard. And like especially because mm-hmm. like as being Hazaras, it's just like uh, people can recognize us like easily from like our face. So yeah, it was most like really difficult. They were like super tired. My, um, so yeah, my younger sister was, she, um, okay, there was an art story actually. So my mom and my sister, Rahmana and my mom, they went like a bit forward because like it's really busy. The world is like really busy. So they went up before there. And my uh, youngest sister, Mahdiya, was left behind like four or five meters away. 
and like she started crying and yelled my uh my rahmana's name she was like rahmana rahmana <laughs> like that she was just started crying and i was just like oh my gosh like when they told me this story like later i was like my heart was so broken i was like this this girl's not like just teenagers you know like just 16 17 years old why do they have to cross the border right now why don't they just like you know like focus on their school they're like so talented it's just like it breaks your heart but yeah yeah i <laughs> yeah. mean your your sisters man yeah they, they brave brave souls and creative too they came up with a lot of creative ideas that we can, we're not sharing yeah. here too but um yeah. yeah so um we were part we i you know, before I was kind of communicating with all of you guys separately with our contacts and Pakistan with you guys and then like Fatima Rabia should go for you and then all that. And I eventually I put you guys all in a, in a same WhatsApp group. Right. So this is like yeah. before right before you guys were starting to cross. Yeah. Yeah. So we you had, you know, Fatima Rabia and Shagofa and you and then we also had like our contacts who are helping us, you know, um, with all the agents and all this stuff. So we were in this like, you know, what big WhatsApp group. And, um, and we were problem solving all along the way. So it's like, <laughs> we got this set up before you guys, you know, I think probably like on the way to Kandahar or something. So we're like, okay, yeah. where are you going to meet? You know, where are you going to stay? Do you guys have the right agents? The night before we're like, this is like really last minute. I don't know if people realize how, how much stuff changes because like some of these agents are super busy. They don't answer the phone calls. They can't, you know, they, yeah, they don't pick up the phone calls. You exactly. gotta like. You gotta be really quick and like problem solve like really quick and like luckily we're all we're all like really you know like ready to help each other and like we're in the same group and yeah we were helping each other and it was amazing yeah, yeah. and the night <laughs> before uh, being at the same time <laughs> yeah the night before we're exchanging you know agent numbers and all this stuff and yeah. call this one, call this person me here me here and then this is like coordinating across different countries right like yeah, uh, different places exactly. and um <laughs> Uh, we, 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 and you guys, you know, what, what I love about kind of the setup is, is, um, it's, it's like, it's not just people who don't know your, your family. It's like, you know them and you're, you're, you're calling them and you're looking out after them. And then we're connecting you with your friends who are doing the same thing and then connecting them with, with me and then others who could, you know, help as well. So it's kind of like this. Um, it's trying to give a superpower to you, you know, and to your family, extra resources, knowledge, and, and a yeah, pathway. Yeah, exactly. And it was awesome to see that WhatsApp group because I'm like, wow, <laughs> it's like you guys are just like doing it all, you know? It's like <laughs> um, amazing. It was definitely an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely hard and scary uh, at the times, and um, but we got through it, which I'm like yeah. proud of each of and every one of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, your family got through. Shagofa's family, um, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, they had, struggled a bit. Yeah, they struggled. Yeah, it took. Yeah. The, yeah, for them, they have like younger sisters, um, like younger siblings. So for like a bigger family of like um, younger siblings, it's a bit harder for them to cross the border because like they can't really hide their face, you know. Yeah. A bit like uh, harder for them to keep the pace. They're like a bit slower, uh, so there's like a lot of reasons for them to um, be a bit like behind. So like they've tried like few times. I just like once like my family crossed the border, I was happy, but like I was just like really scared for like other families, for Shigufas, yeah. for Zara's families, and like I was like yeah, like um, hopefully they can go through it too. Yeah. For them definitely was a lot harder than my family yeah yeah so yeah Shagofa is another friend of you know this group and uh, their family took three days but that's another story I mean I, I think I'm, <laughs> I might have to have Shagofa on and yeah <laughs> yeah that was a crazy one um yeah the yeah. board that border area um just recently just past couple of days has gotten a lot harder to cross um very very much much more difficult and um yeah, there's many reasons behind that. Um, obviously, there's a lot of people trying, and um, there's different, you know, there's a Pakistan side, a, a, a Taliban side, there's um, different, it's complicated. And um, I think, um, I'm glad you guys you guys were able to get out while you could before, you know, right now, because right now it's a different different ball game. And it, yeah. 
it's it's sad it's challenging um but um yeah i think there could be some other way i'm like you know I'm, there's still people contacting me trying to help who have family and um last night i had this idea that it's gonna take some time um but i think it, it has possibility actually to help people so it's another route but and it might be another whatsapp group another <laughs> set of contacts i'm happy to help like yeah yeah see that's to agree i'm gonna help them because like yeah. uh, from all the experience i just like i want to help as much as i can to like all like um because i just like feel really like like sad you know like be it for all the kids back there like they're all talented they're like yeah. they're kids and they deserve to be like to deserve to like live and like be kids you know it just like for us, um, I guess like when I like came to United States or like Canada, it's completely different, you know, like their lives here compared to like our lives in Afghanistan, it's like so different. And, like I always compare things. I'm like, oh, like this is a lot different than back in Afghanistan. You know, kids are like a lot, they have like a lot of opportunities here. They have their families. Um, yeah, it's like a lot harder back in Afghanistan and uh, they don't get those opportunities to like improve their talents or like work on their skills and they're like always, you know, pushed down and like they're like, oh, a lot of them gave up like the younger ages and like I feel like they're, they're a lot mature compared to like, you know, because um, like they've seen a lot. They've seen like people like dying every day. They've seen like their hope, their hopes and dr their dreams dying every day. So like they definitely seen a lot, and they're like um, they're they're broken, and like they deserve to be live like like a kids. They deserve to be happy. Uh, they deserve to have a family. They deserve to have friends. They deserve to have like a social life. A lot of the things which is like impossible right now for them which is like i just want to like help as many people as i can yeah i mean especially as the taliban starts to get more like yeah, yeah. Uh, p power and control and starts to implement their policies like that's so sad to see you know especially especially young girls you know like start to give up yeah. their dreams because yeah it has hard for like younger girls yeah. things were actually changing a bit in Afghanistan like a couple there like a lot of girls they were like and I was like so happy I was like oh my god go girls they were like you know studying you know like um having fun having friends um but things started changing again by like Taliban taking over and they're just like so sad there's all like all those kids they're just like in a box at home they can't move out like they can't go out um and there's a, they can't speak up you know like their voices are broken their hearts are broken their families are broken like i'm pretty sure a lot of them gave up already um so samaya so um so your sisters and your mom um they get out to Quetta, Pakistan, and um, how are they doing? When's the last time you talked with them? I talked to them. She, Rahmana called me around like 4 a.m. She was like a bit like emotional. <laughs> she, that, yeah. I, I try to like, um, you know, I like the, the past last like two nights, I try to get some sleep. But I'm always like, you know, like my phone is always uh, by, like by my side and like I'm just, you know, like I'm ready to like uh, pick up their calls and like talk to them. Like I just want to be like emotional support for them. And so, yeah, uh, she was a bit emotional from all the things that are going on. And like, um, yeah, she was like sad, but like I talked to them. I was like, um, there's always like we should never like lose our hope you know there's always like good people around the world who can help us he she was scared about you know like what's gonna happen after we came to pakistan you know like what if like 
um, I don't know, like, um, they kick us out of here, what's gonna happen from there, you know, like, she was really scared, like, she was like, what if, like, we make, like, start living here, but, like, they, like, destroy our lives here again, like, she was like, I can't do this anymore, yeah, she, they were, like, really, like, she was really scared, and, like, talking and crying, um, usually, like, she's, like, so strong, she's been strong the whole time, she's been, like, taking, because, like, I've been, I wasn't, like, home back home with my family with my mom and sister so she was although she's really young but she has been like taking my mom like taking care of my mom and my sisters uh, I always try to like emotionally support them or financially but yeah she um, uh, it was four in the morning and I was just like I woke up and like she was crying I was just like I was really sad but like I give him like I uh, give her a hope I was like there's always like good people around the world. They like they're happy to help us. And, like Dave is already helping us a lot. Like he's not even sleeping. You know, like when we Dave, not, not only you, like a lot of other yeah. people who are like, helping us a lot. I'm like we shouldn't. They're not g- giving up on us. Like we sh- we shouldn't give up on us too. I talked to her. I talked to her a lot. I was like, okay, it's okay. Um, I'll like. Um, find a way for you guys to like start studying, maybe like take a few courses. Uh, I will like, I'm gonna like bring you guys here. Uh, I'll like for sure, I'm gonna bring you guys in Canada. So, like, I give her like hope, and I'm like hope, hopeful too. So, yeah, that was our 4 a.m. Yeah, oh, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're they're by themselves, you know, they're staying in a, in a tiny room, you know, a place they don't know. Like they don't speak the, you know, it's hard to get around, um, do stuff, um, and literally they didn't, like when they crossed the border, like do you know how much money they had? Like they barely had anything, right? They used it all up, right, at that point. It was so hard. It was just the worst day. They just didn't have anything. It was so hard to like send money from here. It just, it was crazy and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, they were, I mean, your family was like, it was one of those cases where it's like, yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, there's, there's something special, um, getting you guys across. And then, you know, um, um, yeah, it's, it's a new chapter and, um, I know, um, you're trying to help and I'm trying to help you as well. Yesterday, um, we we're trying to get some help from Canada to get your families um, moved out of there. Um, and we got some good news and bad news and you know, a bunch of different news. But one of the good news is, is that I found out, I didn't even know before, that you have permanent residence in Canada. Yeah. Right? right and I'm like, oh my gosh, like that's a game changer. I'm like, I didn't know that in the beginning. And then Fatima and Rabia have permanent residence. We have three. Um, uh, Rabia is studying, and um, uh, Zara um, doesn't have. Uh, um, she's her situation is a bit more complicated. But you guys, at least, I mean, it's, and with your family, you have permanent residence. So last night we're scrambling, and I'm getting you, Fatima, and and Shugofa to, to draft emails to to contact the Canadian government, and um, um, I'm like. We need to get these, these these families out of there, you know, especially your family. And to go for somebody has little kids, uh, actually Fatima's family, but they have a bigger family. But it's like, um, yeah, um, it's um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, and then we got bad um, news too. I mean, the bad news yeah. is we. I reached out to a lawyer who works with refugees in Canada, and he's saying like it doesn't look good right now because he's saying they don't even have um, their their program up and running for Afghan and refugees, right, the special program, they're going to need UNHCR status, they're going to need all this application process, all this stuff before they even start the application process, and then they start that, and then, and it's just so complicated that it's like, it's it's tough to say, you know, like how long they're going to be there, and I mean, I think that's probably part of your sister's anxiety, it's like, uh, how many months or years are we going to be here, what is our future like, like, you know, there's so many questions. Um, it's definitely hard for them because like they're like alone. Yeah. My mom and my two younger sisters. Um. So yeah, like 
there are like definitely a lot like scared because uh, like there's not not much support for them yeah. and like I try my best to support them from here but um yeah like when like he told me yesterday I like I knew that like you know uh, if I emailed the, you know the government and like there was a whole so like I was like really happy yesterday I was like super yeah. happy I'm like yeah oh my gosh I was just like you know daydreaming yeah. I was like oh my gosh I was just like imagining you know manifesting <laughs> my mom and sisters here I'm like oh my gosh like hmm. if only if they were here right now I just things would be a lot different yeah. for me um yeah, yeah. um so folks watching um we need your help um yeah um here we have a you know Canadian permanent resident you know studying in, in Vancouver and um, her younger sisters are stuck um, yeah they don't have m much help on the ground uh, they don't know what to do um, and they could be there for years if, if they don't get the right help um, so yeah um, I'm not gonna handhold people and tell people what to do but for those watching who know what to do like you know what to do right I mean we need to contact, you know, um, people in the government to try to expedite this. This is this video. Give the link. Let people watch it. This is the real story. It's happening real time right now. Um, this isn't something that's you know like happening weeks or days ago. This is like right now, um, Saturday morning, August twenty eighth. Right, I'm doing this interview. Um, so yeah, we need people help helping contacting government. We need help people getting the story out because the more people that know about Samaya's family also the others, the more that people have a connection to them and their stories, to families, that will help them, but also it'll help others, you know? Because a lot of times when people think about Afghanistan, they think, oh, it's just this country way out far away with people who, who talk different and think different and there's no, there's no connection, right? But the reality is, actually, if you take away the, the language barrier and some of the culture things, like, we're all connected. We're all, you know, the same type of people, all same people in a sense, like the same brothers and sisters in a way. And um, I think media can help personalize the story and help people connect. And it can, mo it can help motivate some people to lend a reaching hand out to Samaya, to their um, to their, her sisters out there. Um, and so yeah, we need your help. So YouTube and Twitter folks um, on my network and those other people, you guys did an amazing job helping me and joining me to bring out 38 people um, Samaya and her friends out into Pakistan. Um, and now is the next step. Um, and I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful um, that um, we can help and be of service. And so, yeah, uh, let's get to work, uh, trying to help out. Um, ah, it's, yeah, it's been a long week. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I want to thank you uh, for giving us hope where <laughs> there wasn't any uh, there wasn't any hope I, I was actually like hopeless i was like oh my gosh i can't do much you know like there's no uh, i already like i was just like heartbroken no then like i g got uh, to talk to you and like you started giving me home and like helped us a lot and like you and others i just like i'm really thankful for all of you um I've learned a lot and like I want to like help people yeah like honestly there's like a lot going on in the world and like I want like the world to be like peaceful and like a lot of people kids to be like kids and like live uh, you know happy life um but I'm really thankful for all of you 